I'm really interested in uh, what was different for your farm this year um, and what was different for the community this year. There, we know that there was, uh, has been like a lot of increased demand on uh, food banks. A lot of people are out of work. A lot of people need assistance. Um, what did you see that was different this year with uh, COVID-19 and how did your farm uh, respond to um, some of these really big changes and really big stresses? Where we thought we were going to have a horrible year, we ended up having a, an okay year. In addition to that, locally we donated uh, kale and butternut squash into the local food banks. Uh, last April, I donated a little over 40,000 pounds of squash. And uh, here recently, I guess I haven't totaled it up, but I think it's around 15,000 pounds in addition to several hundred pounds of kale. We actually were um, quite fortunate in that uh, a bulk of um, our products went to New York City into the restaurant tr trade and that basically went in half or less. But with the government programs for food assistance uh, through the COVID programs, um, we were able to sell quite a bit of uh, both squash and uh, kale particularly uh, into food banks all over the country actually. Um, as far as far as Florida. We've been told that um, the produce goes very quickly and that there's a large demand and we haven't actually been to the uh, distribution site ourselves but are depending on our contacts to let us know how it's going and you know it, it's really quite distressing to think about um, that many people in our community that need food. Um, and so I'm, I'm assuming that it's worse, it's, it, there's more need this year than normal because of some of the uh, things that have happened with COVID, the job losses, et cetera. So I just feel good that for us, we had a decent growing year and I feel like it's, it's our duty to give back as much as we can because we've been fortunate compared to many other um, people in other businesses um, this year because of the COVID situation. COVID really launched this into the, you know, where it is today with so many people out of work and so many people needing food. Um, one of the people that heads up um, gathering some of this food for the local food banks had said, uh, you wouldn't believe the people that are coming to get this food. There are people within the community who you never would have thought would have been in this position, but here we are. So we have excess um, and would just would like to make sure that we're contributing to um, the economic survival of our people in our community. A lot of businesses going into the winter months are closing their doors because they, they really just can't keep it open or they can't keep it safe. How do you think you can maintain uh, your resilience even kind of under these new challenges? So um, obviously we'll have to con continue to monitor or pay attention to what's happening uh, here in North America as, as regards to COVID and see whether or not these vaccines are gonna have uh, effects soon enough to protect our season. However, marketing has been all flipped around where there used to be a large percentage of the food consumed within restaurants. Now it's uh, more home cooking. Groceries are experiencing phenomenal years because people are Instead of going to the restaurant, they're going to the grocery store. Uh, home delivery food packets like Blue Apron are, are also having unbelievable years because people can't go out, so they're, they're buying it in. Um, I sell to Misfits that, you know, they, they developed a home package deal of their own, which is going 
great for them. So it's, you know, roll with the punches and um, adjust and go forward. People are still going to eat. It's just they're eating in, from, in different ways. And that's one place where we were a bit fortunate here because this whole thing started in, in March. And that was before our harvest season began. Whereas the growers down in Florida were in the middle of harvest and all of a sudden their markets overnight changed. We had an opportunity to do some changes and make some adjustments before we actually got into our harvest season. And I think going forward that will continue and, and hopefully um, some of our other our customers that we've dealt with for many years in the food service and restaurant industries will gradually pick up and, and will be able to continue doing business with them as well. But it's just a matter of figuring out where your, where your product is going to get shipped because people need it. And it's just, you know, how is, how are you going to get it to them in a different way? The thing I like, and especially this year, it seems like it's even more obvious is um, providing healthy food for people. And there's times when we've, I've gotten phone calls from people in New York City who've seen our product that happen to have our tag on and actually made the effort to look us up online and call and say, that was the best asparagus I ever had. And I literally had that happen this spring during our asparagus season, but we've, it's happened other times too. And it just, it makes you feel good that you can produce something that people really enjoy and it's healthy and um, they think that it's really good. And so that that's the thing that is the most important, I guess, for me. And, and this year has been especially that way. Um, and when we, you know, obviously we can't give away all of our food, but the food that we've been able to donate and know that people really wanted it, really needed it, it just, it's just a good feeling that way. You know, I, I would agree with what Laura said and, um... Part of it's just uh, the green thumb in me. I'm just uh, driven to grow things. <laughs> I'm also um, driven by challenge. And I just like the idea that I'm providing food that's natural, is healthy, and has no guilt. <laughs>